Hello, I'm Rebecca Lewington, and I'm here today with Steve Moyer, software engineer and leader of the team that created Micron's new open source heterogeneous memory storage engine. Steve, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. But first, tell me a little bit about your history and your role at Micron. Sure. Well, let's see. I've been in the uh, storage software industry really my entire career. I started uh, early off in, in academia doing research in uh, parallel file systems and, and data storage for uh, big data type problems. Uh, then I moved into industry, worked through a, a series of, of startups and, and larger companies, really all focused again in storage software, uh, distributed file systems, NAS systems, SAN, object storage, really a, a pretty wide array. Um, I came here to, to Micron uh, back in 2014 and really to focus on, again, storage software for the, the types of memory uh, products that we, uh, that we produce. You know, I think when you, uh, when you look at the storage industry in the past, really last 50 years, I think that the, the type of memory technologies that we have between uh, flash-based SSDs and some of the exciting things that are happening around, you know, 3D crosspoint based storage, Right, they're going to have the largest impact on the, the storage software stack and operating system design, really, of any technology that we've, we've seen in, in, in 50 years. And so, you know, that's what made it uh, a really exciting opportunity for me. Wow, you, so it's hard to think of anyone who could be better to lead a project like this. But before we go, go deep into it, tell us, level set for us, and tell us what a storage engine is. Sure. Uh, you know, Simply, a storage engine is the software component within a storage application that's responsible for, for managing how the, the, the data is, is stored and uh, uh, tiered and manipulated you know, across a set of memory and, and storage devices. Uh, and when I say storage application, uh, you know, originally storage engine technology came out of the database world. That was really the, the first uh, store, uh, type of storage application that recognized the, the storage engine as a formal component, right? But today you see it across, um, you know, a range of uh, storage applications, whether it's uh, software defined storage services, streaming data platforms, uh, you know, artificial intelligence and machine uh, learning solutions, really in a, in a wide range of, of, of applications that are responsible for uh, the management of, of large amounts of data uh, on media. Right. Now, my, my, my modest Wikipedia skills tell me there are lots of storage engines. So how did you, how did this project get started at Micron? Yeah, and, and, and there are, and there's some really great uh, technology that, that's been, you know, developed over the, uh, the past couple of decades in, you know, in, in this space. Um, you know, our focus was, was really looking at saying, you know, we have a new type of, uh, we have new types of storage media, I mean, more than one, right? Hence the name heterogeneous in the name of the product, right? We've got not only our flash-based SSDs, but now products uh, based on storage class memory, you know, 3D crosspoint, uh, particularly. And, you know, we, we realized we really needed to do more than just optimize the existing, an existing storage engine that was really designed for hard drives, but rather to step back and say, hey, you know, if this is our starting point, if these new type of, of storage and memory products are what we're beginning with, right? How would you design a, a storage engine? And, and it leads you to a different, a different kind of answer, a, a different design point. So it's almost like the, some, the storage engines we have were designed for the tech, what was cutting edge 20 years ago, not what's cutting edge now. So, sure, sure, and, and and that's true. And and you know I want to be fair, right? Those were those were great designs for for those products, some really excellent engineering work. And 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 again, you know I want to be fair. They were uh, there's been a lot of work to to continue to to optimize those and make them uh, better for the the new. Uh, storage products that we have today with with SSDs, uh, but really, you know, if you want to take it to the the next level, you've really just got to step back with a clean sheet of paper and say, okay, if this is what I'm starting from, right? How would I how would I design it? And, right. and that's what we've done. And uh, this is probably part of the answer of why you made this open source, which is a fairly unusual move for Micron. Could you tell me a bit about that? 
Yeah, there's really a, a few reasons. You know, first of all, if you look at you know modern data centers and and uh, uh, cloud environments, right? They really all run on on open source, right? Uh, Linux is the, the dominant uh, operating system in those environments. You look at the types of um, applications that, that manage large amounts of data, the types that uh, use a, a storage engine type technology. They're all open source applications. And so, you know, if you want to create this type of technology, you want to make it uh, available for the community to, to build on, right? So that this, these new classes of, of storage applications can really get, um, you know, the maximum benefit from these new storage technologies. You, you've just got to make it open source. Fair enough. And um, you mentioned Linux and I, you, I gather this HSE was specifically designed to be integrated with Linux. And why is that integration important? Yeah, so uh, again, it, we we chose Linux because that really is the the dominant platform in the um, in in data centers and particularly in cloud environments today. Um, and of course, the fact that it's it's open source right gives us that that opportunity to really build and optimize it, uh, or build and optimize our our storage engine for that platform. Um, in terms of the integration, you know, one of the things that was key is we again, because the, the focus on wanting to be able to deal with multiple kinds of storage technologies, particularly as, as they're evolving. You know, with, with SSDs, uh, they started out with uh, the traditional block interface. They sort of mimicked hard drives. They just looked faster or, or are faster. Uh, but if you look at the way the standards are evolving, you're, you're seeing those interfaces change. Um, and, and of course, and again, we have uh, storage devices uh, that will, you know, made from storage class memories that are, are also going to have, you know, changes in interface uh, where we'll be able to access them directly on the memory bus. And so when you have this, uh, this whole new uh, variety of, of storage, um, storage devices based on these new memory technologies, right, we needed a way to design our engine to work with them all, right? To to be able to to take advantage of of pulling them together, and and the only way to do that was to really separate into two, two components. So uh, one component which uh, runs in the the user space of the operating system, and a second component that uh, is integrated into the Linux kernel. And by doing that, by by having a component, a small component that lives within the Linux kernel, right, we can uh, adapt it to these new uh, storage interfaces as as they um, as they uh, come out of the standards committees, as they get integrated in, into into products, and we can then uh, one we can take full advantage of their capabilities. But then the second thing is that it lets us um, insulate the uh, the um, the bulk of the storage engine, which is in, in user space, it lets us it lets us insulate uh, that from the differences in those technologies, the differences in the interfaces, the differences in the in, in the media, uh, and uh, that's that gives us a, a a lot of advantage, not only then from a, a performance perspective, but again being able to just work with a, a wide range of these devices as, as they evolve. Well, well, right. The last thing you want is for the developer to have to think about all this complexity. You just want it to work and work faster than what they have now. Yes, that, that, yeah, that, that's, a, that's exactly right. Um, and so, yeah, they, that getting that component right, into the Linux kernel was, was an important way for us to, to do that. Right. I understand you're working with Red Hat on this. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, you know, Micron actually has uh, has had a, an excellent uh, um, ongoing collaboration with with Red Hat in a number of different uh, areas. So uh, if you look, you'll see you know over the past several years, um, uh, various teams at, at Micron have have worked with Red Hat and, and produced you know all kinds of. Uh, interesting uh, uh, white papers and reference platforms and so forth, uh, you, combining you know, Micron storage and memory products with, uh, uh, with uh, Red Hat's various you know, software technologies. And so it was really a natural uh, 
fit, a natural collaboration for uh, us to reach out to them. You know, we, we had this uh, you know, kernel component. We're very interested in getting into what's called Linux upstream, right, where uh, it gets accepted into the main Linux kernel, and then it can become uh, part of the distributions. And so um, it was uh, just a natural thing for us to do to reach out for them, to be able to get their, their input, you know, to, to uh, uh, work with us, you know, on the code, to uh, really help us uh, uh, develop it in such a way that uh, it will ease that upstreaming process. Right. It must be very exciting for you to think that hopefully soon some of your code is part of the Linux kernel and that in every distribution. Well, it, it is exciting. And, and it's also though how we, uh, we can really bring the maximum benefit to the environment, right? And that's, and that's really the, the end goal here, right? Is we wanna make sure that, that storage applications that build on uh, storage engine technologies are really able to get the, the absolute most uh, out of, of SSDs and, and these emerging uh, storage class memory products. Right. And is this all about Micron or is this useful for other people, other, does it work with other people's stuff? Yeah, so uh, that's, that's a really important question. So um, when you're producing a, a, a product for the open source world, right? It's just, um, it's just essential that it be able to work, you know, uh, across all industry standard storage devices. So, so any storage device that adheres to the, the standards uh, that uh, that the software uh, supports, right, needs to be able to work with that software, and and so ours does. Um, any industry standard on SSD, whether that's based on the NVMe standards, you know, SATA standards, right, they will it will work uh, with our software component. Um, and again, that's that that's that's important for uh, for really enabling the the open source environment, right. But of course, at the same time. Um, as as Micron uh, releases products with you know advanced features and, and capabilities, we we have the opportunity to add support for those, you know, into our storage engine. That makes sense. Now, one thing I should have asked you before is uh, there must be some benefit to using this. I do have we is, does this work with this system? Does this software work? Is it better than what's out there? How much better? Yeah. So uh, you know we've. We've had the opportunity to uh, benchmark, uh, you know, our software um, against a, a range of other storage engine uh, technologies. Uh, there are uh, there's a couple of industry standard benchmarks uh, that are are used for for this type of a software component. YCSB is the main one uh, out there, and you know we've looked at uh, the performance uh, of our storage engine versus other leading uh, open source uh, technologies. Um, and we see, you know, it, it depends, of course, uh, on the workload and the type of devices and a number of other factors. But, you know, we, we often see, you know, three to six times the, uh, the, the throughput. Uh, we see some pretty significant reduction in what's called the, the tail latency in, um, in accesses. It's, it's pretty common to see, you know, 80% or more reduction uh, there. Uh, and one of the things that's a, that uh, we really focused on a lot was reducing what's called write amplification. It's it's reducing the amount of data that's written to SSDs, and that's important because um, that directly influences the uh, the endurance of the drive. And so uh, again, it depends somewhat on workload, but it's it's pretty typical that we see 80% or more reduction in that that write amplification. Wow! So it's it's faster. It makes better use of the drives, so it's it actually lowers the cost of running your storage system. That sounds like a win-win for everybody. That's fantastic. Oh, we think it is. Yeah. Nice. So, what's next for HSE? Well, so our our focus right now really a couple of different areas. Um, our main one again is is the work that we're we're doing in order to uh, try to get the uh, the kernel component upstream, right? Because that's that's really key for driving adoption. So again, um, we've gotten some uh, great input from uh, our friends at, at Red Hat on you know, some things that we can do to um, uh, even better integrate it 
into the, the Linux environment and then submit those patches uh, into the, the upstream. So that's, that is our, our main focus. And then another thing that we're uh, spending a lot of time looking at right now is how we can continue to enhance uh, the capabilities of the storage engine to use, um, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple classes of media, uh, in particular our, our uh, 3D Crosspoint products. Well, I look forward to asking you about all of that, how that goes at some, some point in the future. But um, last thing I should ask you is where do people go if they want to take HSE for a spin? Sure. So uh, probably the easiest place to start if you go to micron.com slash HSE, that's a landing page for the product. Uh, it'll give you an overview and uh, access to some uh, white papers and blogs. And then that has a link to our site on GitHub. Right. And that's where the code lives. And that's where the code lives. Yeah. Well, I encourage everyone who's watching this to go, go download it, play it, play with it, fork it, put your own stuff in it and enjoy. So Steve, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Oh, well, thank you so much for uh, having me.